I feel like we all know about the Steam Deck and the impact that it has had in the PC handheld space. We all know that the PC handheld space existed beforehand, but I feel like the Steam Deck essentially blew it up to a point where the mainstream PC enthusiasts would be genuinely interested in having something like this in their setup or having that be their main setup. Now, every time that I do bring up a PC handout, either in conversation with my friends and family or either on, you know, creating content for this channel, there's always somebody that says, well, you know, if I'm paying six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a PC handout, why don't I just pay a couple hundred bucks more and get an actual laptop with a better processor in some cases, as well as a dedicated GPU in some cases. And that's honestly a fair argument. That would make a lot of sense to get just a couple hundred bucks more and get a better overall experience and more importantly, an actual keyboard. But I digress. When you pair the two together, this is where this comes in. The GPD Win Max 2. Now, first and foremost, I do want to go ahead and give a shout out to Carrie or the Fox. The first time that I saw this in person was actually while we were in a boardroom with some Asus executives and designers and whatnot over at Computex or Asus headquarters in Taipei, which was where Computex was. And I saw that from a distance and I was kind of like, wow, this is amazing. But it was what he said. He said, this is the best handheld right now. This is my favorite go-to handheld. And at the time for me, that was the Steam Deck. So I was kind of like taken aback in terms of like, huh, what is so interesting about this thing? What is it that makes it that great? So when What Geek reached out to me and they said, we want to give you one of these to review for your channel, um, just plug in uh, What Geek. Uh, by the way, links down in the description below if you're interested in getting something like this or anything else from their website. Um, when they reached out to me, I said, you know what? Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll take this and I'll go ahead and you know create something, create some content talking about it. What I didn't think uh, would happen <laughs> would be that I would fall in love with what this little handheld could do at a 10 inch size. I mean, it's just, it's pretty much almost there in terms of width with the Steam Deck as well as the RG Ally X and any of the other handhelds that are out there. But that 16 by 10 screen is just absolutely beautiful. It is so gorgeous to have. And uh, there are, well, there are just so many things that I want to talk about when it comes to this. There are some things that I don't like. There are some things that I disagree with in terms of like why they even made it the way that it is. But in terms of like the size and the design and everything, it's surprisingly ergonomic. It's surprisingly comfortable to hold. And um, I was just, I was just blown away by what this thing could do. This video is sponsored by Obsbot. With the way that laptop bezels are going, we're eventually going to run out of space to have built-in webcams. And technically you could buy any third-party solution and it works just fine, but in terms of features as well as quality, they're typically not that great. This is where the Obsbot Me 2 comes into play. Now, me personally, I was blown away by the quality. I like to have the highest video quality whenever possible. And I know this isn't a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, but in terms of the form factor, the size and the quality that I could get out of it, I was blown away. We're talking about 4K resolution and this thing is just tiny. You can even use this either vertically or horizontally. So no matter what type of content you're trying to record, it'll just work. In terms of colors, this comes in cloud white, space gray and Aurora green. So you can pick whichever everyone fits your needs and desires. Now, there are a slew of features that are here, but if you wanna just use it as a plug and play webcam, it just works. You don't have to worry about things. If you do get the application though, there is a ton of things that just work. For example, there is automatic framing. So if I'm all the way back here, it'll try to get me as close to the center of the frame as possible while adjusting all of the other features that are there. This is really cool because if you're having an online conference or presentation, you can move around wherever you're having that presentation and you'll just be in the middle of the frame. It just works. If you do have privacy concerns though, it does come with this little tiny uh, lens cap that just goes right onto the lens via magnets and it just sticks on. So you can remove it whenever you're ready to go ahead and use it. There are other things though. For example, there's beauty filters. If you want to make yourself look a little younger, then you can do so. You can, you know, there's a skinny filter that's there. If you want to go ahead and use that as well. And there's also a bokeh filter. So if you want to, you know, make sure that the background's all blurred out, it'll work just fine. This does also hook into OBS. So there's a virtual camera option. For example, right now I'm recording every everything through OBS. And it's super cool because all those features that I talked about previously, you'll have that readily available in OBS. So if you're streaming online, whether you know it's Twitch, YouTube, or wherever, it'll just work seamlessly. And if you don't want to use the app, but you just want to use the camera itself, this does work and integrate with a ton of apps and platforms that are there without any issues at all. 
If you're interested in getting your OpsBot Me Too, follow the link in the description below to get yours today. And thanks to OpsBot for sponsoring this video. There are a ton of specs that are packed into this tiny form factor, so much so that I'm probably not going to be able to cover everything in this video, but I did want to go ahead and highlight a couple of things that really stood out to me. First and foremost, the CPU that's inside is the Ryzen 7 8840U, so you are going to be able to get better performance than you could on the 7840U, although the difference is negligible because of the power consumption that is happening. But regardless of that, you are also going to be getting a Radeon 780M GPU that's in this handheld. It's honestly awesome because you are going to get better graphical fidelity and things are just going to be able to run better overall. The next thing that I did want to highlight is the battery. There's a 67 watt hour battery that's built into this thing. And depending on the games that you're playing, if you're either at 10 watts or at 15, 20 watts, depending on the TDP that you're using, you might get anywhere between an hour and a half to like three ish hours, but you can push that all the way up to eight, nine hours, depending on the games that you're playing. If you're playing more indie titles or 2D titles that don't really require that much horsepower, then yeah, you can get away with like six, seven, eight hours easily. But when you're talking about more graphical intensive games like God of War, um, even Elden Ring, if you want to go ahead and throw that into the mix or uh, Metaphor Fantasio games that are coming out there just, you know, might need a little bit more juice, a little bit more processing. Or if you just want a higher graphical fidelity, then you're going to be looking at that one and a half to three hour mark. By the way, my manager has been asking me to ask for people to subscribe to the channel in my videos. Normally, I just do a little icon or notification like that, but she said that I have to verbally ask. So if you like the content, if you like what you've been seeing, then like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Before we get deeper into what this handheld can go ahead and do, I figured it would be a good idea to quit, get acquainted with it. Um, on the bottom side or the front facing portion of the keyboard, you have a power button that doubles as a fingerprint sensor. So if you want to just go ahead and, you know, just use that to unlock your device, you can do so. There's also two downward firing speakers, but on the right side, as well as the left side, you have two other speakers that go well right and left. I think it's kind of cool because it creates this kind of faux 3D-esque effect when it comes to the audio that comes out of it, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Then you have two USB 3.2 ports. And then on the other side, you have a micro SD card slot as well as a regular SD card slot. And it's it's hard to tell, but right over here, there's this little tiny pinhole right over here that you can use to reset your entire handheld, which is pretty awesome. On the back side, there's a, a couple of things that you can go ahead and notice. First and foremost, 3.5 millimeter jack. I love that whenever I see it anywhere. But there's Oculink, which I think is actually pretty awesome. Now, the bandwidth that you see on Oculink versus USB 4.0 is definitely evident, um, but USB 4.0 is much more, uh, I guess, it's more in the wild. You're gonna find that more often than you can, the Oculink port, but it's still nice to have that, um, the options. I like, um, I personally prefer to have more options than not. Then you have your HDMI uh, port as well as a 3.5 uh, USB-C port, but this also doubles as the power delivery port, which uh, it takes in uh, 100 watts. So it charges relatively fast. Then you have your exhaust uh, vent uh, on the bottom. Now th this is pretty cool stuff. So you have uh, your M1 and M2. These are macro keys that you can go ahead and program however you want. Um, but you also have a slot to put in a a 2230 SSD if you want to. Now, there's already a 2280 inside. This one came with uh, two terabytes. Uh it's right over here and it was uh partitioned with uh 1.5 uh terabytes for whatever i wanted to install and then the other 500 uh gigabytes for uh the system so uh the os and so on and so forth now one thing that i noticed that i think is also really cool there is a slot here for a sim card so if you wanted to have a 4g lte sim card you can go ahead and put one in here and that way you can be connected online you can play and you don't have to worry about things now, one thing that I forgot to mention are the actual buttons themselves. You have your left and right uh, bumper. I guess it would be more like this if you're holding it to game. You have your left and right bumper and the triggers are nice. They're not like the Aya Neo ones where they kind of came in at a 45 degree angle. They kind of just go straight down. So it's pretty nice to have that flexibility and that comfort. And you can kind of when you start holding something like this, you know where your hand or your fingers are going to be placed. It just it feels natural to hold it that way. So when you open it up, like all of a sudden, everything just kind of just feels natural. And I thought that this would feel uncomfortable because you're kind of holding a laptop in your hands. But, you know, the way that things are rounded out, it kind of just feels 
fine. I don't really have any issues with anything. Now there's a toggle here if you wanted to go ahead and you know toggle on or off your uh, your controller buttons versus the mouse buttons, um, whatever layout it may be. And the system registers that so that when you are playing a game, it'll go ahead and showcase that. Um, now the analog sticks, they are, you know, they're recessed. They're, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you don't like that style of analog stick, you're, you're just not gonna have a good experience at all. Um, it's okay. It's not bad. I've gotten used to it the more that I've like played games on this. But one thing that uh, as somebody that plays retro games from time to time, whether it's emulation or whatever it may be, or just side scrollers, um, kind of like Hollow Knight or Dead Cells, which I'm currently playing right now, this D-pad is freaking phenomenal. This is probably one of the best D-pads that I have ever played on. And why is that? <laughs> that is because it reminds me of this guy. The PS Vita. Th this is almost exactly one to one in terms of like the layout, the feel, the clickability, the pivot. I mean, it's it's almost one to one, and I cannot overstate how impressed I am with this. Overall, it's just phenomenal. I I am just blown away by that alone. Now you do have your start menu and select buttons that are right here, uh, which respond you know accordingly with a typical X input. Same thing with uh, your face buttons, which are not as big as I would like. I would like them to be a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, and just to kind of like have a little bit more space but overall it, it does the job guys and i think that's the big thing about this now the gpd win max 2 is actually pretty chunky we're looking at it and it's roughly around 1054 grams and if we look at a steam deck just to kind of like compare everything you're looking at roughly around 620 grams altogether so in terms of weight and everything like that it, it's it's beefy but it's understandable because of all of the power that is packed into this little tiny form factor now, of course you have a regular old keyboard right over here, which is awesome because there's so many instances where I wanted to go ahead and type things and things just didn't work out for whatever reason it may be. Your touchpad is right here, which took a little bit of getting used to, but overall it's fine. And then you have a webcam. Guys, like this is a fully fledged laptop, which I think is absolutely freaking awesome. Now, like I said, to go ahead and turn that on, you just uh, push that power button to go ahead and get things booted up. The screen that we have here is an IPS display. The highest resolution is 2560 by 1600, but by default, right out of the box, it's 1920 by 1200. So you have to adjust that yourself. But aside from that, it's 299 PPI, so almost 300, and the peak brightness is 400 nits. Now, for those of you that have been following the channel for a bit, you know that for my job, my day job, I typically do uh, color grading or I just deal with colors overall. Uh, so I'm very used to having a calibrated monitor. And this has 80.2% DC IP3 wide color gamut. Um, without, you know, going too deep into it, it doesn't show 100% of everything that I would want, but it still does a relatively good job. It isn't as bad as the panel that we saw on the Steam Deck LCD model, for instance. So it's pretty good. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10. So whichever games you have that don't support that are automatically going to get those black bars on the top and on the bottom. But aside from that, it's not bad. It's a native uh, landscape screen, so you're not going to have any sort of weird issues in terms of, uh, you know, using a uh, iPad or a tablet screen on this. And this does have fifth gen Corning uh, Gorilla Glass, so you'll be able to, you know, use this as a touchpad and not have to worry about anything crazy. Overall, this is a great piece of hardware <laughs> in every essence. I mean, guys, this is just... I, I, I can't complain. This is just such a good piece of tech overall. Before moving on from the screen, I did wanna go ahead and mention that although I'm able to actually get a high FPS, I mean, I'm looking at around 100, 103 on average for a game like Hollow Knight, I physically can't actually see it because the screen is a 60 Hertz screen. So it's kinda, you get the frames, but you kind of lose th that extra processing power that's there. Most of the time, if you are going to be playing games on this handheld, I do recommend dropping down the frame rate limiter to 60 FPS, just because anything after that is just, well, it's wasted horsepower in the grand scheme of things. Something else to keep in mind is that this does have a built-in mic, so if you wanted to play multiplayer games, 
you can do so pretty easily. I just, if you're playing like CSGO or Valorant or whatever, I don't recommend using uh, twin six uh, analog sticks to have that happen. And, well, these aren't analog sticks, they're hall sensing joysticks, but still I would use mouse and keyboard at that point, but it's still a nice to have feature because if you're playing something like Baldur's Gate 3, where you, know, you have turn-based combat, then it's a little bit easier to have that seamless experience. Now, like I mentioned earlier, ergonomically, I didn't think that I would actually enjoy this as much as I have because this is a heavy boy. This is much heavier than any of the other handhelds that are out there because it's pretty much a fully fledged micro laptop with a bunch of like specs that are in there. But as I was gaming on this, I kind of just felt comfortable. I didn't have to worry too much about it. I felt very secure with the weight of the handheld itself and the positioning of the buttons were nice overall. The one thing that I did run into frequently is I accidentally uh, pushed the macro keys from time to time when I was resting my hands on the back of this handheld. And the thing that happened with that is that, well, this is automatically attached to or assigned to do specific things. One is to take uh, screenshots using the snipping tool uh, in Microsoft and <laughs> every single time that I was trying to do something, it would just take a screenshot. And this is something that you can turn off. There is software that is built into it, but it is something that you should think about when you're actually considering getting something like this for yourself. Speaking of software, there's a handful of programs that I've used to kind of create a better overall experience on the Windows Max 2. And uh, before I get into this list of programs that I found, if there's something that I haven't listed that you have found that you think is a good idea in terms of installing on here, let me know in the comments and let the community know just because I feel like it would be really good for us to kind of like come together on things. Now, when it comes down to it, the first thing that I found right off the bat was auto TDP. And in order for auto TDP to work properly, you need to download a couple of pieces of additional software, um, one being MSI Afterburner, which uh, pretty much essentially comes with the Reva Tuner, but you would also need to get Reva Tuner as well, as well as uh, HW Info, which I personally use all the time whenever I'm testing any of these handhelds anyways. But if you don't have that, you are going to need those three in order to get auto TDP to run. My assumption is that auto TDP grabs all that information from those pieces of software and uh, pretty much tweaks and adjusts the TDP on the CPU and, and GPU in order to ensure that you get the best experience possible, depending on the target frame rate that you have going on. Now, that being said and done, if you don't want to deal with all of that, if you don't want to deal with Windows uh, Command Center or the command window, then I would also recommend a handheld control panel. And that's completely different. I would still recommend downloading uh, HW Info, MSI Afterburner, and Reva Tuner just to have a good idea of what's happening with your hardware overall. But with a uh, handheld control panel, it kind of uh, uh, created this almost uh, Steam OS like quick access menu that you can pull from the right side of the screen, or you can just uh, hold down the LB, RB, and the uh, right button on the D pad, and things just kind of pop up and it just works there. Uh, I found it kind of intuitive. I like the fact that, you know, it's very easy to use, and I didn't think that something like this could be possible, um, especially coming from the uh, Steam Deck or any of the other Windows based handhelds that have a very robust front end and all of them have their own unique quick access menu. Having something like this that you you can use on literally any Windows hardware is pretty cool overall. Now, um, there is handheld companion if you wanted to go ahead and change the way that things interacted um, with the controllers that are here or the control inputs that are here. But for the most part, most people don't need that, but it is an option that's there. Another thing to take into consideration is FX sound. Now, FX sound, it essentially EQs your uh, speakers. And when I first started gaming on here without FX sound, the speakers were not that great. I mean, they were good, they did the job, but it could have been better. And FX Sound essentially fixed that. It adjusted the EQ to ensure that you had the best experience possible, depending on whatever games you were playing or whatever it is that you were doing with the handheld itself. So you have a couple of options when it comes down to it. And I'll have links to all of this in the pinned comment as well as the description down below. But it, like I said, if there's something that you have used or you have found that just improves the experience overall, let us know in the comments. The culmination of all of those things that I mentioned, the programs that are there and the software, as well as the hardware that we've talked about, all of that culminates to playing games on this handheld. And let me just say, 
Playing games on this handheld is something else. Because of that beautiful screen at that high resolution, you can play games and it just it, it works beautifully. Now, this screen is a 60 hertz screen, so you can only hit that 60 FPS max. But even with that being said and done, games that would chug on other handhelds ran relatively well. I was getting around 40 to 50 frames per second on most of the games that are out there that are recent AAA titles like God of War Ragnarok or Final Fantasy 16. I haven't tried out Silent Hill 2 Remake because it hasn't come out yet, but that's another one that I want to go ahead and test out. I tried out uh, Metaphor Re Fantasio and that worked without any issues at all. So in terms of hardware, in terms of driver support and everything, this is just phenomenal and i highly recommend it if you want to get the top dog the mac daddy like we're talking about the best of the best in terms of a mobile experience in a handheld form this is it in terms of power now if you want a more traditional style handheld i still think that the rog ally x might be the best option for most but if you want the best of the best of the best of the best with no with like nothing holding it back this honestly feels like it's it's up there it's definitely up there i understand if there are some people that don't want to deal with any of the windows stuff or finding different programs or different pieces of software to kind of piece together this beautiful experience that you get but in terms of things i i think that this is something that is worth checking out now if you don't want to deal with any of that i'd still recommend the steam deck i still think that that's something that for most people that don't want to deal with drivers and all this and that but still want to experience pc gaming that might be the best option but it really just depends on, you know, the different flavors that you want in terms of a handheld experience. But as of right now, this is I mean, I just I have I have no complaints at all whatsoever in terms of what this has delivered, not only in frames, but experience. The weight of the handheld itself is a little bit heavy. I mean, it is a laptop at the end of the day with an analog sticks there. But aside from that, there really isn't much that I don't like about this. And because of its unique form and its uh, unique, uh, well, pretty much entire package, like it's just it's awesome. And it's very difficult not to recommend this to people. Now, is this something that I would have replace my ROG Ally X or my Steam Deck OLED as of right now? Maybe, sort of, I don't know. It really just depends on the types of games that I'm going to be playing. Obviously, it's a lot easier to pick up a handheld and have that handheld experience versus having a laptop that can be used as a handheld. So it really just bears questioning what you want out of your own personal experience. If you want the best hardware in a handheld form right now, this is it They're like i thought the rog ally x was that but this just is so much more that being said what do you guys think of the gpd win max 2 is this something that you're going to be getting yourself do you already have one let me know down in the comments below i'd love to hear your thoughts on things if, if you want to hear my thoughts on the steam deck oled and why i still think that that's probably the best option for most people then click this video over here and if you want to hear my thoughts on the rog ally x then click this video over here and until next time guys i will see you on the next one peace